Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage, day one at Cisco DevNet Create 2019. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View. We're pleased to welcome to theCUBE Ash Sadiq, strategic business consultant and storytelling coach. Yes. This is an interesting uh, combination, storytelling coach with a bunch of developers. So yes. first of all, talk to us about what it is that you, who do you help learn how to tell stories, and then what your work is with Cisco. Fantastic, so primarily at Cisco, I work with a lot of leaders in a coaching environment where we're really looking at what they are trying to achieve for the organization and how they can articulate that message in an energetic and inspiring way. And we find stories are the best way to engage the audience. I'm working with one leader, he keeps telling me the very last talk he gave the one thing people remember is the story. So everyone is sort of realizing that if I want to tell them something about how we're transitioning from one technology platform to another, if I can find a metaphor, an analogy, a story, I have a much better luck connecting with them and giving them something that they can remember. Is this a, like a personal story that they need to share and kind of open up some vulnerability yes. or just some other metaphor that everybody would understand? Yes, we actually sometimes use you know, one or the other. Like in one case we're using the car racing metaphor to talk about how teams come together to create amazing results so that in that case then it's not about just the, the driver of that car or the team at the pit changing the tires and how fast they do that, but how they collectively then have that success at the end of the race. Or maybe, to your point, maybe it's a personal story that then shows them, hey, you know, I went through a lot of challenges, and I know as engineers you're going through a lot of challenges, and I can see us getting past it. So we also try to tap into what they've been able to achieve in the past. So then he can actually call on their memory. We've been able to produce these products for Cisco. Now, the customer expectations yeah. are changing and we need to get them out to market sooner. Therefore, we need to figure ways where we can build some high-performing teams yeah. and get these products to market much sooner. You know, Ash, what's interesting about your storytelling here on theCUBE, yes. we do a lot of storytelling, is that in the tech world, design thinking yes. has been a big part of the discipline around building products. Yes. How has some of the things that you're bringing this kind of design, storytelling, yes. kind of ethos and thinking yes. into the storytelling creation process. Not just, hey, like I created this thing, yes. now let's go bolt a story onto it. Is there an integration point inside the construction and the creative process yes. that might feed that? Can you take us through Absolutely. the state of the art thinking around this? Uh, absolutely, it's actually, it was very comforting to find that the very first step in design thinking is empathize, which essentially means you have a particular target audience that you're trying to serve with a particular solution. We actually use the word hero to think about that audience, and then we basically say, if she's a mom walking into the hospital lobby with her baby, what is the experience for that mother, right? Can we really empathize? Can we find out what the story is? What's been happening you know, at home, the way she's going to the hospital, and now she's driving into the lobby? How is she being received in that lobby and the service level? And then we basically describe the story again of where things are today, which we can call experience number one. And then we basically talk then about how can we envision a beautiful, delightful experience for that mom. That becomes experience number two. Mm -hmm. And we use these stories between one and two yeah. to really energize us, to really help people understand yeah we need to come up with a much better solution. I want to get your thoughts you know, on um, Steve yeah. Jobs, always said storytelling was critical. Yes. Um, he had was his mantra before he passed away. I had a chance to interview John Chambers at his house recently. Yes. He's got a new book coming out. And he's always been about trends and being on the right wave. So yes. you know, between the two, you had one product leader with Steve Jobs and you have a, a trend seer like John Chambers. Yes. How much of the DNA of the person you're coaching, yes. that their natural talent shapes how you engage with how yes. they could be better, a better storyteller. Yeah, what I'm finding a lot, especially also with technical leaders, a lot of the time they're very sort of reserved. They sort of walk in the building and all of a sudden they have this sort of character where I am not as, you know, 
you know, charging ahead as I should be. And a lot of the time I basically say, hey, can we get this voice to have a little bit of character? Can we get some vocal variety in here? Can we actually tell a story? Can you actually get up, stand up, and open up and really, you know, tell us something about who you are and why you want to do this, this project to lead this team forward? So to your point, I really help them find out that they're actually like any other average citizen, they have so much energy and power within them, they just come into the corporate office and think, oh, I need to have a corporate character. Then I come back and say, you know what, I actually need you, I need John to be here. You know, in person, with all the stories that you can tell, and I tell them, go back into your own childhood and let's figure out some of those stories, so that when you're talking about those stories, you remember the excitement, you remember the people that were there, and then all of a sudden there's a bit of life in them, you know, so that's a, what I help them discover is that actually they have these stories and they are engaging, they are inspiring if they actually let them come out. I imagine that's got to be easier with some guys and girls than others. Some of those who really maybe don't like yes. public speaking or, or having to explain something that can be quite esoteric to certain audiences. Yes. What are some of the things that you've learned yes. about working with some of these technologists that have helped kind of refine your methodology for cracking that surface and, yes. and unleashing this energy and this sort of natural passion yes. that's hidden inside. Absolutely, and, and you know what's happening here at Cisco, especially at Cisco, where you see technology being used to do a lot of communication, a lot of them are realizing, if I don't articulate my message, I'm not going to get the funding. I'm not going to get the best resources. So they realize that communication became part of how do I influence up and make sure that my stakeholders understand that we have a critical project so there is part of it where they know that there's a lot on the line if they don't speak up. And then they come to someone like me and say, Ash, how can we do this? So we then talk through, what are you trying to accomplish with this team? What's that vision? And how can we build a, a case for change? And that becomes the thing that energizes them first, and then we energize their teams, and we think about how do you take this message to executives that can give you the funding that you're looking for. So you yeah. talked about, before we went live, this uh, program at Cisco, this sort of Shark Tank-like program. Yes. Where you're working with very technical exactly, men and women yeah. Yeah. who might have a brilliant idea, but in terms of articulating that to be able to get, like you said before, get yes. funding or sponsorship for programs. Yes. Can you give us maybe one of your favorite examples of a, of a when you started with ex experience yes. one or phase one where it took you about a half an hour to figure out yes. that's the gold to yes. getting to the, ah, there's the story. Yes. That's Tell a great question. something that really sticks yes. with you. Great question. So the program is called Hack It IT and it's an incubator program as I mentioned. And one example, uh, a team in China actually was working on the idea of how do we reduce the number of customers that could be thinking about walking away from Cisco so the technical term for that is customer churn. So the, I got on the phone with them, and of course, you know, there are some challenges when it comes to speaking English by, by a, lot of, uh, a lot of our Chinese colleagues, but then I listened in and I paid attention and then I started asking them, what got you interested in this idea? Well, we started to really kind of break down the fact that they have figured out that there is a way to listen into the data within Cisco and figure out that once they actually identify certain signals, they can help the sales teams realize they need to go talk to John because John, if he doesn't have someone talking to him very soon, he or she might actually shift and go to another, another company. And then I said, well, what percentage do you think that uh, churn is right now? And we found out that it may be like about 7% and with the technology they are building, we can bring it down to 3%. I was like, ding, 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 earnings per share, number of customers, dollars per quarter, it was just an amazing opportunity, and once they came out and communicated clearly, it was the winning idea at the end of the day. So you're helping take these technical folks yes. start to understand the business impact Absolutely, and yeah. communicate and it in a it very is. different way, right? Yes. And how big it is. That can be pretty transformative yes. for I think anybody in yeah. any field, right? And I remember on the call I said, did we guys, did we take a look at the industry averages? on the churn, you know, what, what's the situation at Juniper, what's the situation at HPE, how does Cisco compare, how can we make sure that Cisco is much better off? Phenomenal opportunity for Cisco to listen in and, and, and catch things before they happen. What would be your advice to folks watching around yes. how to be a better storyteller because you can really reel people in, get their attention, yes. 
and then deliver the payload, whether it's venture funding yes. or getting a project funded inside a corporation. Yes. There's always people interested in how they could be better storytellers. What's your a playbook? Absolutely. So, so the reason, the, the, I talk about what I do is I really help people become chief excitement officers, which means we need to find the excitement. Once we find the excitement, it's like finding gold in a very, very tough mountain. And once we find the gold, then we can extract it out, and then we can showcase it, right? So I think a lot of the time we're having difficulty finding out where the gold is. And that's one of the things that I help them with. But if they sit with their teams and really brainstorm, what opportunities do we have? What are the sizes? How can we vet some of these ideas out? Then all of a sudden that idea, that gold starts to show up and they are much more equipped to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I have on the executive uh, greatness.com slash storytelling, there is a nice cheat sheet that people can download and use to start really crafting these stories by first using a template in the beginning and then once they do it once, two, two, twice, three times, it gets easier and better. And if they can build a culture around storytelling, it makes life so much easier. So you've got the, I think you mentioned briefly, I want to make sure our viewers started, yes. the Executive Greatness Institute is something that you've created. Yes. And that people can go to that and find that template that you were just mentioning. Exactly, so executivegreatness.com slash storytelling and they can download that template. It should be a very easy fill-in process in the beginning and it's a fantastic experience to really find get that the gold, make some story. fine jewelry, make some yes. bars and you It's know. amazing, there's so much potential because. It just because must be for anybody, and sorry to yes. interrupt, in any industry, anybody Absolutely, who can learn yes. how to find a way to yes. connect with whomever, whatever, but it sounds like yes. a lot of kind of horizontal benefits for anybody at Absolutely. any level of their career. Totally, because what we're finding is the clarity of the message, once people get it, then you can actually ask them to do things for you or with you. But until then, there's a huge divide. People sit in these uh, con uh, you know, all hands meetings, the, the, the executive speaks, he or she speaks, they're not really catching on. You know, it's not so clear. It's about connecting. It's about connecting. Clarity and is the passage and story becomes the fantastic bridge yeah. to really do that connection. And really making it about being part of the same yes. story. Exactly. That connection creates more retention. Absolutely. Success. One proposal versus the other. Exactly. Could be a swing, the swing could be the story. Yes, exactly. Because what when we were working with these teams, we found out that if they can't communicate it, we could be losing out on a multi-billion dollar idea. You know, you one know. thing I want to get your thoughts on while you're yeah. here, because sure. this is, I'm feeling like I'm in a counseling session, because all we try to do is figure yes. out how to tell our story better, and our customers who come on theCUBE, they have social media channels, they have more channels, yes. the story's broken down into little highlights and small video clips, yes. so companies are challenged, not just individuals, to yes. have a brand exactly. in social media. Absolutely. How do you take the goal, that excitement, and break it up yes. and share into the story, story in exactly. all channels possible? Absolutely. You, you yeah. any opinion on that? Or? It's, it's a lot of tough work, but to, but to your point, we need to find what that brand story is and make sure that everybody's actually clear on it. Because a lot of the time, to your point, when you bring them together, each one has a different story. Absolutely. You know? So I think part of it is to really come together and say, let's create the story, let's honor it, by then spreading it across the organization. In a consistent way. And then way. we use it on the website, we use it in our marketing and our sales conversations. Yeah. And if you start with that story with customers, you have something that's a whole lot more engaging Get than anything else. Get that story out there in a digital footprint. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. I wonder if even what you're talking about in terms of, you're right, it's, it's about connection, yeah. is even more important as the world gets more and more and more connected with devices, yes. and we get so focused on talking to a device, we've got to kind of come back to, you're sort of bringing people back to the, the human basic connection. communication. Exactly, Lisa, yeah. Exactly, which yeah. is, thankfully, yeah. still needed. And, and to yes. your point, I think what you're able to show your customers is a tremendous business impact yes. that this connection, this yes. basic human connection and storytelling can make. Absolutely. And, and the fact that you're really talking about human beings at the end, those experiences at the very end are touching somebody. And we need to get excited. We basically, um, one of the executives from GE basically said, we need people who can go to the future and then get so excited and then come back, kind of keep that excitement on their face. Yeah and walk around the organization, keep telling them, you know, when we get to Yosemite, you're going to see these waterfalls, the, the, the fresh air is amazing, I've been there, I saw it, I can't wait to get you guys there. And that's what they do on a daily basis. They're just walking around with that bug inside of them, they can see what it's like, yeah, yeah. and they can't wait to get everybody there. This is also something yeah. that, that 
can really breed and foster cultural transformation within Absolutely, a yeah. GE, an organization that has been around and has so many moving parts. Yes. Cultural transformation is essential for any company to transform digitally, and that's a hard yeah, thing to do. Exactly, But it exactly. sounds like, you know, if you can, I, I like it. chief excitement officer. I think yes. my dog is my chief <laughs> excitement officer. Yeah. But being able to maintain that and sustain yes. it from, from a cultural transformation perspective Absolutely. is huge. Absolutely, because all the digital transformation efforts are about that vision of the future, whether it's healthcare, to your point, or automotive industry, or any other industry, it's about what kind of experience, much better experience, yeah. are we going to create. You well, know, Ash, I, great talking with yeah. you, exciting topic. Yes. Thank you for giving some time to John and me today at Dunhead. Absolutely, thank you so much. We Lee. appreciate Thanks, John. it. Thank you so much. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live at Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.